Hey, hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks out there. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, a meteorologist, D.T. from weatherrisk.com, the uh, captain of catastrophe, the colonel of confusion, the commander of chaos. It's Monday, midday, and it's time to do This Week in Weather. Wasn't able to do it Sunday night, didn't get back from the West Coast until late, and it was just too tired and too chaotic to do that. So we're getting around to doing it here midday Monday. And lots to talk about and some more interesting weather. So let's get right to it. We'll start out by uh, giving a review of what we think of big events coming up here over the next uh, two weeks. And uh, lots of weather to talk about. We'll start out with this is the uh, actual uh, surface weather map here as of uh, Monday morning. And uh, we could see the uh, big uh, low pressure area, the first one that dropped heavy snow, as much as 17 inches of snow in Bismarck, North Dakota, in case you did not see it. We can see this low right there. That's the system. And then, of course, it's associated cold front sweeping this way as such. Now, uh, we have the high off the coast, which is moving out to sea. And we're getting as this front is going to stall essentially like this across the Midwest and become a big rain producing and snow producing mechanism. So we're going to be talking about another spring major snowstorm for the Upper Plains into western Ontario and the western Great Lakes. More widespread soaking heavy, heavy rains for the Midwest, all of the Mississippi Valley. More early season warmth for the East Coast, which will end with the uh, weekend cold front and then more uncertainty about next week some of the models for the six to ten days show a drier pattern setting up but not all of them and then hints of finally of a warmer and drier pattern week three week four just some hints we'll see if that actually takes place or not all right now this is the large scale map here of uh, north america we can enlarge it a little bit so we can see more detail and of course what i want to point out here is how much cold air there's still up those in canada look at all this amazingly cold air way up in here for canada and that's helping to feed these systems they as they come out of the west coast uh, they pull the cold air and behind it we get these big blizzards and heavy snows in the central and upper plains which is what we've been seeing so uh, that's the uh, amount of cold air in canada is one of the things which has to change long term in order for the pattern to change so let's talk about the major spring snowstorm for the Upper Plains coming up. We had a huge one last week. We had a, a one over on Sunday, Monday, but that was mostly for Montana and North Dakota and into uh, northern Minnesota, and then another much bigger one coming up here over the next three days, three or four days. And like I said here, now this is the European model from early on uh, Monday morning, uh, and we can this is valid for 7 p.m. Wednesday. As you can see, let me draw it in here. Here's our front like this. You see it very clearly. Distinction. Now here's the large Arctic high, and we can see feed, feeding the cold air in this way, while we have the other high off the coast, and it's feeding. Look at this warm air flow. Look at the lines coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, feeding all this moisture. So as a result, this whole area sees heavy rain and snow, and snow as you go further to the northwest and into all up in here. So essentially what it looks like is, let me call it one more time, uh, this here is the front, okay, and here's all our rain in this area, and then the snow is back up in here. And it's quite impressive. And we can see that taking a look at the next map. Now, this is the European model here for uh, Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Now, what's happened is, is that uh, the front has moved very slowly. There's our low pressure area. Here's the front right through here, south of Chicago, the down to Louisiana. So, this is all snow up in here, all the precipitation on the northwest side. And this is all heavy rain and thunderstorms, tremendous amount of rain, a lot of inflow in here. And the warm air is moving into North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, dries all the way up into Boston and into northern New York State, uh, so they should have a pretty nice spring day or getting the nice weather. Now, uh, in terms of the snowfall amounts, this is the GFS. The European model is pretty similar, not quite as heavy in some places, but generally similar. And we can see huge amounts of snow. Uh, if we uh, draw the lines here, uh, we can see this is dark brown. Look what this is. 20 inches of snow. Of course, that's east of Wyoming, very high elevation, but even so, look at the purples and the oranges in here. This is, you know, a 10, 12, 14 inches of snow all up in this area in here. So a lot of snow coming in with this system over uh, the next three or four days. Again, notice northern Indiana here. Uh, um, uh, northern Indiana is going to be the dividing line. This is Interstate 80, in case you did not know it. It runs through here, Chicago. So most of the snow north of that up in this whole area in here. And then a lot of snow up in the western Ontario as well. Okay. 
Now let's talk about the soaking rains. Obviously, with this sort of pattern, this very slow moving front, the huge high off the coast, a lot of warmth on the east coast, and more soaking rains. This is the GFS now from the earliest morning, uh, the 6Z run on Monday. And this is for the next five days. Tremendous amounts of rain, five inches of rain in this whole area in here. I mean, wow, that's a lot of rain. And this area is saturated already. So, uh, agricultural interests are not going to get a whole lot of planting done. Now, the rain doesn't reach the East Coast too much, and this is all in here is all snow, but look, that's a tremendous amount of rain up in this area, five, six inches of rain in some places over the next five days. Not all at once, but still, that's an impressive amount of rain. Now, this is the European here for uh, day five, Friday evening, and the cold front, as you can see, is approaching the East Coast. There's the low up in here, and here's the front running down like this. So probably thunderstorms all up and down the East Coast at this point Friday evening. A lot of strong southerly winds feeding the moisture up. The cold air is plunging southward. Midwest is much, again, way below normal. A lot of snow on the ground in some places. Cold air gets down to Arkansas. So this is an impressive front, very typical of springtime but impressive nonetheless. And then by uh, the Saturday evening, the front is now off the coast, as you can clearly see. Uh, the front is right here, okay? And we've got cold air in this way. Notice the Texas and New Mexico is still staying pretty warm. Now, we look at our teleconnections. This is the Arctic Oscillation, <clears throat> and we can see that it's very, very positive. Look, look at this, way up in here. I uh, remember just a couple of weeks ago, it was way down this way. So anyway, it's very positive here as of April 19th to 20th. Then it drops down a little bit to neutral as it go towards May 1st. As long as it stays positive, that should be indication of the cold pattern breaking down. And then uh, this is the uh, um, EPO here for uh, and the and P and A right next to each other. And of course, the EPO. And in Alaska, what this means, this is the ridge in Alaska ridge. So with this is neutral, so there's no ridging in Alaska at all. This is the PNA. It gets close to neutral, and it's negative, and it gets close to neutral and flat. So this represents no PNA ridge. This is all negative here, negative, negative, negative. So at best, it's either neutral or negative PNA. That means trough on the west coast, no sustained ridging for the next several days, the next week or so, uh, for maybe 10 days on the west coast. Now, if we look at the NAO, we can see uh, equally the same sort of thing here. Now, this is the west-based NAO. This is the east-based NAO. And they're both strong. Look at this. Super positive uh, April 19th, 20th, and slowly dropping down here. Super positive on the eastern NAO, and then slowly dropping towards neutral. So, again, this is a sign for more warm air on the east coast, eastern United States. Now, this is the European for day eight. And what do we see here? Well, the European has a nice high here. You can see it. And then look at this one trough here and this next trough here. So the model may be trying to phase the two systems into a big trough. So this piece is going to catch up to this one. You get a big trough here over the east coast. And uh, that can meant for some dry conditions over the plains in the Midwest, but more storminess for the east coast. Uh, and we'll see if that is, in fact, the case. And we can see the European hinting at this a little bit. This is the European ensembles showing pretty much the same sort of thing. And then this is the uh, European ensembles at day uh, 9. And we can clearly see some sort of front running right in here. Look at the high, getting the southeasterly winds, feeding the moisture into the east coast. There's the high behind it, cool, dry winds here. So the Midwest and the Upper Plains dries out, sees a lot less snow here in the 6 to 10 day, a lot less rainfall. But it may be time for the east coast to be stuck in a wet pattern here for several days. And this is the uh, European at day 10. We can see, in fact, the operational one. From, this is from this morning. We can see that the uh, cold front is another cold front right along the east coast. Very dry all up in here and cool, but uh, a lot of moisture and rain on the east coast. In fact, this is the GFS ensembles from early this morning, and this is for the 6 to 10 day period. And if you notice, it's got a lot of rain here, folks, over the Midwest. So I'm not certain if you want to think that it's going to be all that dry. I mean, the, mid, the GFS ensemble show a lot of rain east of the Plain states. This does not look like a dry pattern. The European is, the GFS is not. And that's the distinction here we have to work on and see which one's correct. Probably the, G, the GFS will end up being wrong, but we don't know that yet. And if we look at the uh, operational GFS, it actually looks pretty similar day 10 to the European. You can see the one piece of energy here, the other piece here. The European had it down this way, but the same general idea. And this is the European uh, large scale at day 10, and we can see a lot of fe interesting features here. Here's a trough on the east coast. We have one vortex here, the other one here, the other one there. 
uh, blocking up, still some blocking, a little bit of ridging here on the west coast. Um, and, you know, our troughs, very noticeable, three troughs, three big vortexes. Uh, Europe turning warmer and drier as well, very nice in here. Finally, Russia turning cool and wetter, as does the northern China. And this is the European ensembles at day 10. And notice there's our trough here right on the east coast. You can see that. Uh, that we have big low in Iceland, so that's a positive, uh, very distinct. This is a positive NAO, no doubt about that. Uh, still have a negative NAO or neutral in here a little bit. A little bit of ridging on the west coast, not as much as the operational run. And then the next slide, this is the GFS ensembles, day 10. Again, and day actually 11 to 15 day. And as you can see, there's a deep trough here. See this? So this is all cold air, relatively speaking, for the end of, December, end of April, not winter cold. And there's a little bit of ridge on the west coast. That's the operational run. The ensembles from the European from early this morning, a weak ridging on the west coast, not a huge ridge. In other words, we're not seeing this. We're not seeing a huge ridge on the west coast. Instead, we're seeing a moderate ridge on the west coast and a moderate trough of the eastern United States. And that's a pretty good looking pattern. I think that's pretty typical. This would bring about um, a drier weather pattern in here. Not a warmer one, just a drier one. A little warmer than they have been, but. Uh, still getting some northwest flow here, but it definitely a drier one and a wet pattern for the east coast. If you look at the uh, MJO, the MJO is now moved into, as you can see, let me point it out to you right here. See, it's in, in, it's in the circle of death. Here's the circle of death, the neutral zone. So as of April 14th, it's in the neutral zone. And if you look at the models work quickly on the uh, MJO, the European keeps this in the circle of death through April 29th, or neutral and weak. The European uh, weeklies and the monthlies, they bring it in the keep in the circle of death. Uh, the GFS keeps it in the circle of death through April 29th. And then the UCMET does the same thing, brings it a little out towards, one, um, out towards zone one and then back into the circle of death. The, U Europe, the uh, British ensembles as well. So they all have show a very weak, uh, non-impacting MJO. And if you look at week three and week four, by week three we can see the precipitation. Notice here. We are getting drier weather patterns stepping up here. This is April 29th and May 5th, and then also a somewhat drier pattern over the over the Midwest, the East Coast. So this would be good for getting the, the corn crop planted, if in fact it happens. And a lot of people are probably speculating that it is going to be to turn drier here in May. And then if we look uh, at the temperatures, it's still quite cold here. Look at all the cold in Canada. You can see it very nicely. A lot of cold up in here, and still cold on the East Coast. But by week three, look what happens. The cold retreats, and the warm air that was here begins to expand towards the East Coast. So it definitely looks like a warmer, drier pattern on this CFS. So um, that's what I think is going to happen. We don't know that yet, but that's where I'm trending right now. This has been Meteorologist DT from WeatherRisk.com. I'll talk to you soon.